grow rapidly. There's a lot of pressure to get more clients, to get more figures, to get more products. And it's always more, more, more. But at the expense of what? More doesn't necessarily equal better. More doesn't necessarily equal quality. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Welcome to the Whole and Unleashed podcast, season three. I've finally been feeling a lot more spacious to create, to reflect, and share. I have so many ideas, topics, projects twirling around. I'm letting them incubate, brew. Because I do have a completely open head and ashna after all, along with an undefined root. So sometimes I get a lot of ideas and inspiration, but I don't always have the energy to execute them or meant to jump on all of them. So I'm really practicing patience, letting them, you know, bake a little bit. And if you're new to the podcast or human design in general, you can find more information about it on my website or just Google human design. Now, I don't know about you, but 2023 was sort of a bizarre year. So many of my clients like me felt ready to launch, to take off in so many directions, but life, universe, and many other factors said, let's pause and test all the foundations, all the healing, all the tools that you've built since 2018 till now. At least that's what it felt for me if I really look back and reflect. But even if it seemed like nothing really quote unquote went according to plan, it was also a big invitation to surrender and to do less. Grounding into what really matters. At least that was the theme for me personally. And my husband and I, we had a lot of family events in the past year. Like every week, month, there was someone visiting, some important milestone happening. And while it had us running around, it was also so nice to be able to spend time with the people that we love and care, especially after the lockdowns and with everyone mostly working remotely. In-person connections are always appreciated, the people that we love. My parents also don't live close to us. They live in Peru, so any chance I get to see them, I will prioritize them. That could be a little bit tiring sometimes, but it's also fun. And to be honest, though, there were also times where I felt quite guilty that I should be doing more in my business. I should be offering more tools and services, but there was only so much I could do given the circumstances. When I look back at my life, I won't likely be thinking about my business metrics as much. I'm lucky to love what I do, to connect with amazing people, and it's a huge part of my life, but I'm pretty sure in my deathbed I'll probably be reminiscing about the memories I've created with my loved ones, the connections I've had. But the most surprising part was when I was kind of revisiting the year that even though I wasn't able to create a lot of new projects, it was also the year with the most growth in clients, collaboration, product sales, and even podcast listeners. I was getting one of those end of year wraps from Spotify. And 2023 was the year with like 120% increase in listens. It blew my mind. My husband's like probably a lot of his relatives (laughs) because we met a lot of them which is so sweet and a a little bit nerve-wracking. I don't know why. It feels so vulnerable for the people that I know in my life to hear my podcast for some reason. It's kind of silly. But it blew my mind the most because 
I barely release any new episodes. And it's actually given me a lot to reflect on, on how to create a business, a life, create tools that are sustainable and also accessible for others. Now, this might sound cocky or even privileged to a degree, but I'm not in the business of making money quick. Coming from the online business world, there's so much advice to grow rapidly. There's a lot of pressure to get more clients, to get more figures, to get more products, and it's always more, more, more. But at the expense of what? More doesn't necessarily equal better. More doesn't necessarily equal quality. And while that is supportive for certain businesses, I realize it's not for me at this stage. I've really been really intentional, mindful in creating content that feels good for me to create, that feels fun and energizing for me, and also at the same time, that is rich and accessible. From free resources to different price ranges for anybody who wants to work with me, I want a business that has an entity of its own that can still function without me hovering on top of it all the time being in front of the computer. And I've been really lucky that in the past couple of years, it's almost like I've figured out my own rhythm, what I want, what I want to create, and the way to express it in a way that is the most useful, efficient, and sustainable to me to get to where I'm here now. It's definitely been a slow growth, but it feels so deeply rooted and intentional. Being able to work with myself, my own energetics, grounding into my core values instead of going against myself, trying to fit into a mold or trying to walk certain steps that others have taken before me. Because there are thousands, infinite ways to do something, to do our businesses, to live our lives, how to eat, how to dress, how to make money, how to relate to others. And It's important to, you know, sometimes recognize that there's a lot of different ways to do something, but also at the end, bring it back into ourselves. How can we honor where we are and where we want to go? And it's not always easy (laughs) because there's so much noise out there. There's so much advice. There's so many experts, quote unquote, especially in this digital information era, right? Everything is so accessible at our fingertips. How can we create enough space to take in and then also release what is not supportive for us at this stage? You know, who knows, maybe later on along the way. And then also just keep going on our path because there are things that we cannot control and there are things that we can. The more we focus on trying to change the external, the less energy we have to take care of ourselves. Because there's only so much we can do when we're in an overextending space. We're very flexible. We're resilient. We can bounce back often when we move away from our centers. But if we spend too much time out of alignment, trying to be something we're not, trying to mold ourselves into something, we don't have the capacity or energy then we're going to end up depleting our resources ourselves and end up with an internal battle. And there's so much focus in how our society is currently set up to be always on, to be always doing all the time. And look, doing is not necessarily a bad thing. There is a difference between doing what you have the energy for and getting nourished by that from that versus what you think you should be doing, yet you don't have the energy for doing it and you end up draining yourself in the long run. Now, before we explore the difference between energy for doing what you want versus the things you should not be doing, I wanted to explore a little bit more, dive into the illusion that the more we do, the more we'll get. This is a belief that is so rooted in society in a very linear way of thinking. We do A so we can go straight to B. Sometimes, you know, that's the case. But 
very often it's not. There's a belief that the more we do, the more we get to control. Being resting is labeled as lazy, unproductive, guilt-ridden. But the thing is, it's an equally important part of the process. It's the balance between doing and being. Now, we spend so much time and we're encouraged to be doing, to be productive, as opposed to being. Being seems like something that, or at least resting, seems like something you have to work hard to get to. You don't get to rest until you have done whatever's in your to-do list, whatever productivity feels like. And during my corporate years, and even the beginning of my business, I was heavily leaning into this masculine energy while neglecting my feminine. Deep in the hustle, the FOMO mode and running on a lot of caffeine. (laughs) So naturally, I was burned out and I kept burning out. And I've touched a little bit about the masculine and feminine here and there. And if you tried my Align and Embody journal, there's a little section there about it as well. But, you know, burnout is becoming more and more common nowadays. And while I can probably talk about this for hours, I wanted to touch on one aspect of burnout here, getting lost in the doing. You see, again, both are important. The ability to do, to create, you know, it feels good to use our creativity and then to also step back. But society often favors the masculine, where hard work is praised while rest is frowned upon. This creates an imbalance. We all have both energies within us, and depending on which season you are in your life, you may lean on to one more than the other. But it's important to be mindful so you can come back and recalibrate, so you can tinker. The masculine energy is often associated with doing, creating, willpower, clarity and focus. It's all about planning, structures and rules, giving. While the feminine energy is often associated with flowing, being, allowing, dynamic. Think intuition and trust. It's about slowing down and nurturing the energy of receiving. And less doing creates space for inspiration. Rest allows your body and mind to recharge, to heal, to let go and purge. So allow yourselves to go through the seasons just like nature to create when it's time to and rest after you, you know, tended to your garden, planted the seeds because the fruits will come, but you have to do to give it time and space. And something I shared a few times, it's like, you know, sometimes we're so eager, at least for me, you know, we want to make things happen. So I plant my seeds. And I find myself getting in my own way. It's almost like I'm hovering on top of the seeds and wanting, like waiting for it to grow. But what I'm actually doing is preventing the sun, the rain from reaching those seeds because I'm like so busy hovering, like, you know, okay, trying to give it all the love so that the seeds will sprout that I don't recover and I don't let it bloom. I can't co-create with the universe. I don't let other factors to come and make the magic happen because we don't do everything ourselves. There are so many factors, so many external influences that influences what we create, how we create. When I was trying to recover from burnout, I had a lot of difficulty slowing down. In fact, it made me anxious to go from being so busy, so overstimulated all the time, my amplifying that sacral, that root energy, that adrenaline to not having a lot of it, it felt like almost like withdrawal. But then I also realized that I was so conditioned by that energy that I had attached my worth to how much I could do and how much I could accomplish. Now, if you're listening and you're a manifesting generator or you're someone that has a lot of energy that you feel pulled to be moving, doing all the time, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm telling you not to do to go against your design, your own inner guidance. But there is a difference between being busy for the sake of 
because it was guilt driven, because it's pressure from the external versus doing something that brings you a lot of joy. So perhaps this is a good time to bring back the difference between doing something that deeply nourishes us versus the difference of doing something because we think we should, yet we are lacking the energy, the support to actually go through that. That's when I feel like at least the language of human design, of what we amplify, what we take in, of our definition, our process and the gates and the channels, that's when the knowledge can be pretty useful to have an extra layer of self-awareness and be like, hey, I'm someone that, for instance, have an undefined root and an undefined sacral center. So that means I amplify that energy around me in our centers, our open centers, undefined centers are designed to take in, but not to hold on to that energy on the long run. This is why we burn out sometimes when we operate from borrow energy and we make decisions, we make big decisions out of that state of like hyper, hyper energetic state. And then we're out of that energy or our body is trying to kind of calibrate from, you know, moving that energy in our body, but it's unable to. There are ways where we can really tune into ourselves and not be afraid of amplifying it, but also listen to the guidance of our body. What is our body saying? Are we giving our bodies, our minds to rest? Or are we trying to push and try to make something happen? Which, you know, happens so often. There's pressure from the outside. There's pressure from our open centers as well. Like I also said at the beginning, I have a completely open head in Ajna, a center for inspiration, questions, problem solving. I can take in anything. And then if something feels fascinating to me, I might want to jump into it. And then the next day I might notice, oh, that energy is not there anymore. So taking the step back to know enough that, hey, maybe brew on this a little bit more. That's when our strategy and authority comes in and our loudest inner guidance. And it offers us like, yes, do this. Or like, yes, I have energy for this. Or like, maybe not, maybe later. Both is so important. These little tools, this language that helps us understand ourselves a little bit better and also the stories that might come up further as we open the path for ourselves as we open the path to sensitize to our bodies our intuition and also the pressure that we're feeling from the outside or the noise or the questions or wherever we're trying to go how can we build that capacity to be able to look at it from different angles and to hold before we impulsively try to react and then we're running around like a headless chicken. Because this is often what happens when we start doing the things that we should be doing. Anything that starts with a should, I feel like it's a good indication that it's not coming from an intuitive guidance. The shoulds. The shoulds are probably sometimes from the mind, sometimes the outside. You should be writing an email every day. I don't know. I'm just throwing random things out there. You should be posting to get more engagement. You should, all those things, if it doesn't feel aligned to us, if it, if it doesn't feel good, you know, like there's no energy that's going towards there, then we will be depleted by the time that we do the thing we should be doing, but it doesn't feel good. So how can we create the space to step back and sensitize to First, what our body needs, what it's craving for, to what thoughts, what beliefs start to come up when we do tend to our bodies and there seems to be some sort of conflict. And then finally, how can we create the space to respond to what our body, our intuition is telling us? Because the more we try to do sometimes in an effort to control, ends up depleting us. It's almost like we're getting in our own way. We're trying to do all the things, but our body, our mind is telling us, hey, we need a little bit of tending to. You know, they say that less is more. And I think I've reached a place in my life where I'm able to really see ways that I overextend myself or just try to do all the things when I don't have the capacity for. And also the times that I do have an energetic burst and I do have a season of 
creating, of doing, and going along the flow. But also being aware that it's not something that happens all the time. I'm not always in an output mode. And, you know, overall, the theme of this episode of what's coming up is that maybe less does lead to more. What can you subtract from your days? What can you scale back, pull back from doing? Because we get so busy, caught up in this race, this frequency, this state of having to do more, of having to create more, just wanting, chasing more all the time without really having the space to pause and listen and tune in to be like, wait, do we actually need more right now at this stage? Or do I need to pause and just watch myself to have to be on every social media platform because for instance I'm starting something new and I want everybody to know about it maybe if that feels exciting for you because again there are so many ideas so many techniques methods of things that people have tried and it's worked for them and I get it. We learn from them. And while a part of us really wants to achieve success, satisfaction, peace, surprise, abundance, we think that by doing more will get us there. It doesn't mean we have to do all the things that worked for different people. Sometimes the reality is that we end up depleting ourselves. We end up overextending ourselves by wanting to do more things or thinking that we need to do more things to achieve whatever version of success that feels good for us. So if there's anything I can leave you with today is that what if we start taking away from what we have in our day to day? What if we can reduce our to-do list to a degree? What can we subtract so we can have a little bit more of spaciousness expansiveness what can we lessen to give ourselves more breathing room and also having more space to rest i also don't think this could purely come from me <laughs> that we prioritize our rest or downtime enough we're so overstimulating information at our fingertips news there is a lot of noise a lot of a device, a lot of stories, a lot of things out there, and they're not bad. They're kind of on neutral ground. But we are also, you know, someone who's taking in a vessel. We're also amplifying, experiencing all of those energies that we come into contact with. So turning the lens inwards instead of what more can we do to get to where we want to be, but really tune in and look into ourselves what is our body trying to tell us what is our mind our spirit really craving for and you'll be surprised that by tending to these things that we can actually control that we can actually notice and respond to actually creates more creativity more energy so that you can show up to do the things you want to do that you have to do as well to survive in this world. I'm so excited to be sharing more, to pour more energy into the podcast. I have so many expansion episodes that were recorded last year, interviews with guests, and I just can't wait to be able to share this part of my expression, to share the stories from people, share the experiences, and just to continue building what it means to be whole and alleged, what it means to be coming home to ourselves. And you'll find resources being updated on my website, on Human Design Gates. And also, I want to focus on the coming home portal, this little home that I made to talk about human design. We had one community meeting last year, and I want to make these more common. I'm thinking about recording the gates and having discussions around it because I think the best part of us learning about ourselves sometimes is through reflections of the other. They help it, us tap into those unconscious parts of us. So I'm really, really excited. Thank you so much for listening, for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next episode. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.